Aloha, I'm Representative Kimberly Pye and I want to thank you for joining us for Time with Kimberly Pye. We have a great show for you today and we're going to talk about uh, veterans who are, are returning home as well as the homeless veterans issue and today we have an incredible guest, uh, Daryl Vincent. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for having uh, me. Uh, Vice President of uh, Programs of U.S. Vets. And before we get started, I, I, I kind of want the audience to see a little bit about what you do at U.S. Vets. So let's watch the, the video just real briefly. It's criminal to have a veteran serve this country and come back and not have a place to live. One out of six of the homeless in our country who sleep on our streets, one out of six today is a veteran. A veteran today is 50% more likely to be homeless than the average American. I served, when I was in Iraq, I served at Fallujah. And uh, I was transitioning to back to a, uh, another infantry ba uh, battalion, and uh, I ended up getting hurt on a uh, training op. After I got out, I, um, you know, I really didn't have any plans for anything. You know, I was just living, I saved up a bunch of money. And uh, actually, that kind of went by fast. I didn't know really how to live like a normal life because I went in at a young age, you know. I ended up uh, just blowing through all my money and I found myself here at U.S. Vets. U.S. Vets has been in existence since 1992 and it started in our mother site in Inglewood, California. In Hawaii, we started actually in the year 2002. Our job is to basically find homeless veterans and offer them comprehensive services, take them off the street or wherever they're living. I go out, uh, I go to uh, anywhere where homeless individuals may frequent. I also visit bridges, underpasses, caves, anywhere where veterans or homeless people uh, may venture. So most of my job too entails maybe convincing an individual to, to give up that life on the street, um, some of the misery, and try to do something a little bit more uh, proactive. I was drinking way too much and it had just consumed my life. It was. Um, it really had a chokehold on me, and uh, I, I tried to do it by myself uh, to kick the habit, and I, I felt like I had no support, and this was my last hope. If I didn't come here, I would have died, without a doubt. This is a place for veterans to get back their respect, their self-confidence, their pride, things that no man or woman should ever lose. You fought for your country, you deserve your dignity, and this is a place to help you get it back. We've been very successful with our substance abuse program. We have about an 85% success rate with sobriety while people are in the program and at the time of discharge. We attribute that success to our therapeutic community, veterans helping each other. 100% of the clients here are military veterans, so they're used to structure, even if they didn't like it. Some of them fight it initially, are not happy with it, and then later tell us, thank you, because I really did need it. I needed that structure to help me get back on track. Aloha, welcome to US Vets. This is my, my second time around. These people, they helped me with my drug use. It made me aware about my, my usage that, you know, I got other opportunities besides using. At any given time, we have approximately 100 veterans in our program. It's a 98 veteran veteran program, but sometimes we have an overflow, what we call, where we'll have veterans still be in the program, wait till a bed opens up. At any given time, at least half that uh, Since you first opened in the early 2000s. That's right. Now, what are some of the problems that our, our, our soldiers and, and Navy and Air Force men and women are having that are returning from Iraq and Afghanistan? Well, in particular with the people we're seeing coming back from the current conflict, is reality is they're coming back and they're different people than they were when they left. And we see a lot of domestic problems that are, can be attributed to post-traumatic stress disorder. So they're going to the VA to get treatment because the VA has become really stellar at making sure they get the treatment and catch it early because a lot of times the veterans we're seeing in our program were from the Vietnam War time and I think we've learned our lesson that we have to catch it early. So they're coming back, they're finding themselves dealing with this and sometimes using drugs and alcohol to cope with that and next thing they know they find themselves homeless and then we're there to try to help them get back on the road to recovery. Now is it harder to bring a, a veteran that's homeless in to get help than it is a, a uh, someone from the, the regular homeless population? Yes, sometimes our outreach worker will say that although the veterans will distinguish themselves, we're taught to be as soldiers that we have to handle our own problems, we're taught to endure. Sometimes asking for help is hard from anyone, let alone a veteran that's used to what we say, soldier up and do what you have to do. So a lot of times, yes, we can find it a little bit more trying to convince or to maybe let a veteran know asking for help is actually showing your independence because you're saying, I need some help, you've earned the right to get the help from us, let us give it to you. 
Now, I remember when you folks first started uh, out of Barber's Point and it was out of the old barracks mm -hmm. and, and you didn't have a, a lot of help. You had yeah. you didn't help certainly from the VA and mm -hmm. um, it was a struggle in the beginning, but now you folks are pretty much an established organization. What else is the VA doing to help veterans uh, who are just returning home? Well, the VA has really, I feel, been at the forefront of showing how we can solve this homeless problem with the smaller population and maybe that can for parlay into the bigger population of people that are not veterans. They have the VASH program which is a partner with HUD that's basically taking the most chronically homeless veterans off the street, putting them into permanent housing, not transitional, giving them a subsidy and lifelong case management as needed to make sure they stay in the housing. They also have the SSVF grant which is a supportive services veterans family. It's the first veterans family grant that's ever come out from the VA where you actually can help a veteran and his family get into housing, prevent homelessness, which is the only way we're going to end this thing, to make sure that people are in their housing can get some money to stay in their housing when they run into problems. So the VA has been at the forefront with partnering with the community agencies, with us being one, U.S. Vets, to make sure we're reaching those veterans that come back, and all veterans in general. How many homeless veterans are there in Hawaii every year? Well, they estimate that homeless periods about 6,000. Mm -hmm. And we say on any given night, about 10%, 600 can be veterans across the state. Um, on any, I mean, you can double that number throughout the course of a year. But on any given night, when we do our point in time count, we come close to 600 are homeless veterans that are in our streets of Hawaii. Is there a, a particular area that you're finding these veterans more, or are they just automatically referred to you uh, by the VA? Well, we have an outreach team that literally goes out in the streets every day to the beaches, to the parks, wherever we feel that people that may need our services, we go to them. Obviously, the most concentration of homelessness or we find most homeless in the urban neighborhoods, but they're also on the leeward coast as well. And our job is to find them. What happens is because we become a little bit more well-known, service providers are now calling us and say, I have a veteran that came in my door for service, let us refer them to you. So we've been lucky in that aspect of now we have people calling us to get the help, as well as we're still outreaching to them. Now your program was a little controversial when you first started here in Hawaii. Uh, the veterans were not allowed to not have a schedule when they first came in. They had to give back to the community um, and the organization. And, uh, uh, tell me how that works. Well, we preach self-sufficiency, mm -hmm. uh, the old story of teach you how to fish or give you a fish. Mm -hmm. So if we believe that you take away someone's dignity if you do something for them that they can do for themselves. So when they enter our door, they're put in a schedule from day one on these are the expectations based on their input about where you want to go. So the goal is, what do you want to do? We want to make sure you never have to come back to a place like this again. Mm -hmm. How do we accomplish that? And that may be through various reasons, drug treatment, mental health treatment, getting a job, but making sure that everyone's getting out of the bed every morning and doing something, which we're lucky. It's not unfamiliar territory for veterans. Veterans are used to structure, they're used to boot camp, and this is nowhere close to boot camp. But it is a structured environment where the expectation is, you will learn how to get back on your feet, and you're the one that has to sustain it. We're merely here to facilitate that process. Now, has funding increased from uh, the federal government to assist with this? Well, the VA's per diem has increased from the time we've opened. Mm -hmm. um, the HUD funding has pretty much stayed the same as well as Department of Labor. As we all know, the country's in an economic crisis. We're lucky that social services for veterans has not been dramatically cut and that we're able to still give the services we need. Obviously, we need to mix those services with private money. So my job is to go out and make sure I'm talking in the community and getting people who are interested in really seeing an impact, not just giving money and wondering what's happening, but for every dollar we can show where a veterans, how he's being helped and how he's reaching success and how he's no longer on the system and now he's a tax-paying citizen giving back to the community more than he ever took it out. Now you have three buildings there and depending on which program that you're in within the program, now explain how that works as well. Sure. A veteran in our program literally can come from the streets today. We encounter someone today and move into a bed that quickly and they require no money they only require to be able to say I want to follow the program rules they come into our program we put them on a track depending if they need treatment or don't to get back to work and when they graduate they can move in one of two buildings and live in permanent housing where they have a landlord tenant agreement they live just like you and I do they come and go as they want but they're still surrounded by other veterans and the social workers and all the staff that continue to help them if they have some things they run into and have some problems and make sure they can maintain their housing so mm -hmm. it starts off structured and becomes less structured so obviously they can start being self-sufficient and no longer leave services at all. 
Well, speaking of that, let's let's uh, look at another video. Uh, Marco Johnson, who's uh, one of your wonderful employees in the outreach department. Yes, uh, he used to be a veteran that you helped, and mm -hmm. and so let's watch how he helps other veterans uh, get the help that they need uh, when they when they just get back. Unfortunately, even as we honor their service, many veterans will spend tonight in shelters or on the street. There are hundreds of them on Oahu. Hawaii News Now's Jim Mendoza has part two of our special report. Organizations offer shelter and services to Hawaii's homeless veterans. Getting them connected is one man's mission. How you doing? My name, my name is Marco, man. I'm looking for the veterans. Marco Johnson's marching orders take him to a world few outsiders see. The event? He handles outreach for U.S. vets. What's that? The Kalailoa Shelter assists homeless veterans. How you doing? My, my name is Marco. But first, right, he has to yeah, find them. Wow, look at there. Yeah, there's got to be some vets over there. What's up, buddy? Alone or with a social worker, Johnson goes door to door to places that defy know. description, where the homeless congregate. Looking for veterans. When he makes contact Marvel, with a homeless vet. vet, Johnson offers food. How are you? Shelter and a way out of homelessness. I usually state to them that I'm with U.S. vets. Are you familiar with U.S. vets? And I ask them, how you doing? Are you a veteran? How's it going, my friend? Are you familiar with how to get down there where all the people are in, in a Results minute? are fruitful. Or frustrated. I do some drugs. Oh, you do some drugs? Would you, would you be willing to, uh, to give that up? Make some changes? Uh, right now, uh, I don't really do not already. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're not ready. You're not ready to quit just yet. Johnson relates to homeless veterans because he once walked in their shoes. After a stint in the Navy, personal issues, pride, and ego drove him down and drove a wedge in his family. All right. For a time, he didn't have a place to call home. I've been exposed to some of the things that they're going through emotionally, physically, and mentally. And I understand the street. U.S. vets saved him, then hired him to find homeless veterans. Military veterans? He goes into shelters and soup kitchens. Any vets back here? He looks under bridges and freeways, and most recently, in caves. Mr. Eggleston. Ex-soldier Douglas Eggleston has lived in this coastline cave for years. He recycles for money and fishes for food. He doesn't want to leave. I don't need a babysitter. And to regulate what I, my living, I earn my respect, I think. Please give us a call or contact us immediately. Johnson never takes rejection. As a final so answer, he'll be back. Thank you. And we assess whatever need and we address. And the only thing we can go by is what they say. He says the Kalailoa shelter is full of veterans who first had to come to the end of themselves before they reached out for help. Josh Finn is one of them. Substance abuse, uh, drinking and smoking marijuana and just couldn't, it's pure stranglehold of depression that, um, that I, I needed to fix. Vets are everywhere. Wherever there's homeless people, there's vets. Johnson has cataloged 70 spots on Oahu where he has found homeless veterans. How are you? He knows there are more. Hello. He's built a network of contacts within the homeless Hello? community. How's it going, my friend? They let him know when a vet vets, moves buddy. in and where to find him. They stand straight forward. They look in the eye. And they usually veterans ask for help. We frequent this area on a regular basis. Okay, we'll call the VA, which is our clinical liaison, and we'll run, run a check on you. Make Five sure days a week for the past well, we'll four years, by, uh, Johnson we'll sought you. out homeless veterans. Right. Thank you very much, Thank my friend. He's taken you, scores of them off the street to the Kalailoa shelter, where they get back on their feet. When the sun comes up tomorrow, he'll be making the rounds again. U.S. Vets holds its Patriot Walk and Run fundraiser Saturday morning at the waterfront at Pu'uloa. For more information, go to PatriotRunHawaii.com. Jim Mendoza, Hawaii News Now. Well, that was a great story, and we want to thank Marco for all of his hard work and efforts to ensure that our veterans are safe. And we want to thank you, Daryl, for helping as well. Absolutely. Now, what else can government do to help our veterans that are in need? Well, obviously, we like to see the funding stay at the level it is nationwide when it comes to the per diem programs and also putting more money into permanent housing 
through HUD and through the VA's partnership with VASH. We want to make sure those vouchers continue because it's been proven that permanent supportive housing is what's going to end this thing, is going to help us to tackle the homelessness, which is Secretary Shinseki's plan, five-year plan to end homelessness among veterans. We have three years left, a little bit less than three years, and we need to make sure that we stay on that path to do that. Here in Hawaii, I know there's a veterans treat treatment court that's going through right now that's just passed over to the Senate that will allow us to work with veterans They get into some minor law problems or they're going to a court and they have outstanding warrants or it's not something that's a felony but something they need help for, drug addiction, drunk and intoxication, anything of, of that nature where they actually, instead of being going to jail, they can be funneled to a program, get help so they're not sitting incarcerated. And those are the kind of things that uh, we hope the legislation will look favorably on. Now, why do you, that there is a big debate on why veterans need their own court. Why would they need their own court? Do they have different issues that they're dealing with that are separate from the rest of the population? I think what happens is that whenever you can take a subpopulation and specialize services for them, I think it's a golden opportunity to pave the way even for the greater population. Mm -hmm. And other agencies and other cities, they have homeless courts, they have veterans court. And I think it's important to understand that veterans that come back and have served their country now deserve something back in return to say, hey, we understand. We're not allowing you to get away with things. That's the myth. We're not saying that you go to court and all of a sudden you're totally off the hook. We're saying that now we can get a chance, that slight door window opportunity to give you help, to get you back on the road to recovery, to be a tax-paying citizen. Because remember, these are men or women that have fought for our country and the same streets that we're walking on, we are doing no service if they're sleeping on those same streets. I noticed one of your veterans, he had been to Iraq or Afghanistan three times. Are you seeing more veterans like that come into your population? Absolutely. Um, we have to say that fortunately or unfortunately, we've been able to see some of these veterans coming back and we've seen a rise with the conflict and with people coming home. Mm -hmm. uh, we're lucky enough to be there for them. Our job is to someday not have to be there for them. Mm -hmm. They're coming back with different issues and they have different availability to them. They have a lot of funding to go back to school, mental health services through the VA are being offered. So what we're trying to do is make sure we catch them early, catch them when they, before they become homeless. They're in the community colleges, they're at home, they're working jobs and things start arising. We want to be able to get them to the VA, get them to services so they don't have to enter our door. But if they do enter our door, we want to make sure we get those services. And last year, we saw 40 unduplicated uh, veterans that came from the current conflict that we had to serve in our homeless program. Now, you're not, not just involved at U.S. Vets, you're also involved in um, Partners in Care and Governor Abercrombie's efforts mm -hmm. to end homelessness in Hawaii. Now, how is that going uh, with um, the recent goals that we have to end homelessness in the state? Uh, we've made a lot of progress. I'm uh, fortunate enough to be the chairperson for the Partners in Care for the second year, and our whole mission is to make sure that all the agencies are providing salient services that are needed for the homeless and we're not duplicating services and we're using the best resources for the limited funds that we get. Governor Abercrombie has established the Interagency Council on Homelessness, which is all the providers of state and federal and city entities all coming together and deciding what is the plan. What we're doing is we're revising the 10-year plan that was done originally in 2004, mm -hmm. revamped in 2008, made an addendum in 2010, and now in 2012 we're revising it again to say this is our plan that coincides with the federal plan to end homelessness in 2010 that was established by Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we follow the president's and the federal plan and align with that mm -hmm. to make sure we're meeting our goals and tackling homelessness in Hawaii. What was different, because uh, in 2005, I believe the governor declared the state of emergency uh, for homelessness mm -hmm. and um, uh, was able to uh, form multiple coalitions. Mm -hmm. And so what, what is the difference between then, which was more kind of an urgent mm -hmm. thing, and, and, and now when you're revising to the federal plan? Exactly what you pointed out. We're mm -hmm. trying to plan versus it being, okay, there's an emergency. Homelessness mm -hmm. is an emergency, period. Mm -hmm. But instead of waiting for the problem, we know what the problems are. We're identifying the problems, but we have to make sure we have everyone at the table. And that's the biggest thing is the coordination. And I can say definitely that Governor Abercrombie has made an assertive effort to get everyone at the table talking. So the governor, the mayor, City Council, the mayors from the Outer Islands, the continuum of care in the Outer Islands, bridging the gap, the Department of Labor, the Department of Education, Housing Authority, DHS, all the entities along with the non-service providers, the community, for-profit and non-profit developers, we all at the table once a, every quarter to go over the plan and then we're supposed to go back and have subcommittees where they do the actual work of this is what needs to be done in order for us to gain access and end this thing. And when I say end this thing, I mean homelessness among everyone, not only just veterans, but everyone in the state of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. 
Now, what are what are the continued challenges? We talked a little bit earlier about what more the the state and the federal government can do. What could private citizens do, do to help with this situation? Well, obviously, we always talk about the education and the awareness. We want to make sure that everyone understands and not stigmatized. Uh, homeless have the same problems that people with homes have. There are people in their homes that have drug addiction. Doesn't mean they should be homeless. They have people in their home that have mental health condition. Doesn't mean they should be homeless. And we want to make sure that we educate the community that it's a shared problem with a shared solution. And why sometimes we understand people don't want to get directly involved or feel they don't have the skill set. I think educating yourself, volunteering, advocating, and being okay with sometimes integrating. We don't want to isolate and say put all the homeless over here. They should be integrated in our community like anyone else is. And I think that's the biggest thing I can say for a private citizen is come to a meeting, get involved in our partners and care, go to your neighborhood board meeting, understand the things we're doing in each community and that would help and go a long way. Now there's been a lot of talk about uh, and you mentioned earlier about helping veterans and their families. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been discussions about having uh, like villages like you have in the mainland where veterans and their families can actually live for a long period of time? Yes, uh, hopefully we'll be able to have families at our current location down the road. We have a developer that actually is leasing land from the VA to build some more units out there that will incorporate families. For right now, U.S. Vets in Hawaii is able to serve families in our permanent housing program in a scattered mm -hmm. model, meaning we're not going to put them all in one location, but we'll find a unit wherever someone's willing to rent and put a family in there, subsidize their rent, and give them case management services. But obviously, we definitely look forward to having a unit at our location where we can put families in immediately and then transition them into the community. How's your, your Waianae um, population doing? Uh, I know that was it was a struggle at first. You're wondering if you could use the same policies where there's mm. regimen and schedule sure. and paying of rent if you, if you have the right. income. Um, on that that population there, which was originally it was a mili more of a military type of, mm. of of a regimen, but I heard that they actually did even better on that regimen over there. Yes, they're doing great. We just celebrated the five year anniversary last Saturday. The mm -hmm. program's been open for five years. They've had great success in working with families, individuals, military veterans too. Mm -hmm. And we don't do the exact same model because it doesn't make sense to try to treat families the same way you'll treat an individual. Mm -hmm. So we have a little bit more tolerance when it comes to certain issues as long as we're addressing them because we don't obviously want to bring a family in, hold them to a standard that's not realistic and then put them out when they can't meet that standard. That makes no sense. So we absolutely, absolutely adjust it and we thank the community for teaching us what to do because we came into this project running a veteran program. We learned so much by hiring the experts and saying the best thing, the smartest thing we did was say, we don't know, help us. And the community really helped us get that program off the ground. And you have really great people on your board too that has implemented the, the Hawaiian culture. Absolutely. And uh, it's really blossomed and actually probably surpassed a lot of programs. And, and I think it's that, that community partnership model that I think really helps a lot. We're very proud of the relationship that we established in the Leeward Coast. We're very proud of all the providers, Why Not Community Outreach. We're very proud of all those people that came in and taught us what we need to do because uh, Why Not Coast Comprehensive because we wouldn't have done it without their help. So what is your ultimate <coughs> dream? Uh, you've seen a lot of progress mm -hmm. and so where do you see uh, U.S. vets 10 years from now? Oh, 10 years from now we hope that we're out of business. <laughs> <laughs> We hope that we're able to do more prevention. Mm -hmm. We hope that we're helping veterans, period. No longer put homeless and veterans in even the same sentence. That we're able to say that veterans that have issues can come to us and get immediate help and put them into housing and give them the services while they're in the housing. So will we ever end homelessness among veterans? I have to say I do believe in Shinseki's plan because it's not just about whether there's ever going to be a veteran on the street. It's going to be about how long is he in the street and we can reach him immediately and it doesn't become chronic and makes it that much more easier to make sure they get back to the road of independence. So 10 years from now, we want to be helping veterans in prevention if we're still around as an organization. Just not necessarily having to be in the homeless business, but in the business of preventing homelessness. That would be my dream. Now you you still do get uh, uh, Vietnam veterans. Yes. How has it been a struggle to to, to to help them because they have they didn't get the help right away that, right. that our that our Afghanistan and Iraqi veterans have gotten. How 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 have you helped that population? Well, they're the predominant population at one mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. and they come in and obviously when they're predominant, it's been some chronic issues, chronic mm -hmm. homelessness, chronic mm -hmm. addiction, chronic alcoholism, mm -hmm. and sometimes not wanting to get the help. Our job is to bridge that gap between them and the VA and the resources in the community. We've been very successful. The majority of our program for the last 
10, 15 years nationwide have been with these veterans. Now we're seeing a change, but the reality is these are the veterans that have been coming through and with our success rate of having 70% veterans get back to work, 80% moving into the community, having an 85% sobriety rate. This is reflective of the Vietnam era vets. So they're very successful when they get in a structured environment. It just needs the communal atmosphere. I think the camaraderie with them works better. We see with the younger vets in the community, still mingling, going to college and interacting works better with them. Mm. Now tell me, you have an event coming up on March uh, 31st from 10 to 4 p.m. It's a welcome home celebration. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. The Purple Heart organization that's been very supportive of us wanted to do a welcome home veterans to say for those that ever came back from any combat, in particular Vietnam, that didn't get the welcome home they did when they first came back, but all veterans from all conflicts, mm -hmm. we want to say welcome home. Thank you for what you've done. It's our way of thanking veterans for their service to their country and we want to make sure that they feel that we have that gratitude, not just on Veterans Day, but every day of the week. And so if a veteran is watching and they need help today, who do they call? They can call 6300771, Marco Johnson. He will answer the phone and make sure that he gives them the services he needs. He's our veteran service manager. He's the one you saw in the video. He knows how to link everyone to direct linkage, and that's what we do. We would love for them to give us a call. We definitely will answer 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And say that number again? 6300771. I want to thank you so much for all your service to our veterans, and we forgot to mention Daryl is a veteran himself, a Marine. Yes, we forgive you for that. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's in the Navy. But uh, we really are grateful that you're ensuring that this next generation of men and women who served our country do not end up uh, with the disrespect that our Vietnam veterans had uh, on them. And, and I'm very proud of our country and proud of you that, that we are ensuring that we take care of those who served. So thank you, Daryl Vincent, for oh, joining thank us. You. Thank you for having me. And I want to thank all of you for joining us uh, for our show, A Time with Kimberly Pine. And our, our next show, uh, we'll be talking to Chef Alan Wong and several others talking about sustainability uh, in Hawaii and ensure that we increase our local food consumption by 10%. Mahalo for joining us. I'm Kimberly Pine, and I'll see you next time. Aloha.